for teachers, it is very important to sensitize students so that there is an empathy for the subject, so that students don't just see this as a dry technical subject which only activates one part of their mind. We believe that to create motivation, to really create buildings that are thoughtfully cool, students should be sensitized towards a subject of understanding heat transfer in a building. Here are some ideas we'd like to propose that teachers could use in their classroom to generate debates and stimulate the minds and spirits of students to care about the subject of heat transfer. Starting with some dialogical themes that could be used in the nascent stages of a semester long course. One idea could be, do students want to just understand buildings as an aesthetic entity to be looked at, to be just consumed visually or should they or do they want to be able to understand the inner workings the way the building reacts to the climate around them, would that not create a deeper understanding of the building that they are designing? So one debate could be, what is the level of understanding students would like to possess about the buildings they design? We have been hearing in mainstream media, in our popular cultural discourse about smart cities and the importance for development purposes in India. One interesting debate that could be had, since there is a lot of criticism of this smart city concept, a debate could center around the idea of a common sense city versus a smart city. A common sense city, for instance, would perhaps not have cutting edge space age technology to solve our urban problems, but at least would address the amount of heat that our buildings gain and the amount of comfort that they provide to their residents of all economic classes. A third debate idea would be to question the logic of building buildings which are part oven and part refrigerator. In a sense, a building with a glass facade in a tropical climate will actually function as an oven storing heat from the sun and to battle it, what we often do in most spaces including this one is turn on an air conditioner which is like a refrigerator which constantly fights the oven and this is essentially a building in crisis a fourth idea could be trying to evoke the experience of students that you are engaging with or even other professors in the classroom who might have experienced conditions where the Climatic conditions within the building are in fact worse than the climatic conditions outside. When buildings were designed to provide shelter from environmental and weather phenomenon, what then is the use of creating a building which actually is tougher and hotter inside than it is outside? Students can feel motivated to never want to create a building that does this or perpetuates this kind of discomfort amongst its occupants. These are four debate ideas that could be used in classes. Other debate ideas that could be used, especially since architecture students often learn about indigenous communities, vernacular architecture that has been prevalent for centuries, predating modernity and industrial revolution, would be to try and introspect about the mechanisms that might have been used by traditional communities, indigenous communities to cool their buildings without the use of a fan or an air conditioner, which therefore perhaps illuminates upon this idea of progress versus regress. If our forefathers and if our ancestors could cool buildings without the use of fossil energy and now in our modern urban constructions, we are unable to do this even at the cost of a lot of environmental damage and economic cost as well, are we then progressing or regressing? So this would be a nice stimulating debate to have to get the students getting their, their hands dirty with the subject of heat transfer. Another interesting debate could be had about the 
Common patterns that are visible in almost every historical or heritage monument that students might have visited through their class trips or in their own personal lives. Some of those patterns have got to do with thick walls that are used in those buildings. A debate could center around the logic that might have operated in these buildings to make sure that the heat that the sun that the sun radiates onto the building is shielded as much as possible. Right? So the debate could uh, center around that idea. Finally, an interesting debate for this could be the logic of using air, which is actually a poor conductor of heat, but it is commonly used as an element to pick up heat from the human body through an air conditioner. This really calls into question the basic physics or the basic thinking behind an air conditioner. And we believe that this could create a lot of empathy among students who then might want to question the logic of an, a device or an appliance which they, have, which they have thought is imperative for the functioning of a building or providing thermal comfort. Beyond debates, since debates only activate again one part of a being's mind, here are some physical activities, action-oriented things that could be done in a classroom or outside it, which generate empathy, generate concern, and also build motivation for the student to act, to learn about heat transfer and building physics. One could, a simple activity could be to just sensorily activate your entire being and, and try to focus on heat transfer processes that are ongoing in the classroom. For example, if there is an open window or if there is a shading device or if there is a nearby tree with lush foliage, how are all these elements creating or impeding heat transfer into the building? Another very interesting activity which gets them to think about these processes beyond the classroom as well because these are not just abstract ideas that exist only on uh, a two-dimensional sheet of paper or on a presentation. These ideas of heat transfer are ubiquitous. They are present all around us. One way to indicate this to students or get them to start noticing it is they could note down as part of an exercise two or three heat transfer related features of the next mall or commercial building that they visit. A third idea could be to understand how a car functions like a greenhouse and simulates the kind of thermal discomfort that a glass building creates for its occupants. So for instance, students could sit inside a car with all the windows rolled up for about 10 minutes in bright daylight. This will give them a sensation or experiential learning about the thermal discomfort involved with glass enclosed buildings. A fourth idea for conducting an activity in a classroom could be to use what's called a infrared thermometer or a temperature gun. These are commonly available devices for a few thousand rupees, which could be used and pointed at different surfaces in the classroom, including the roof, ceiling, your own body temperature, to start sensing where the thermal gradients will lead to heat coming into your body and where are the opportunities to lose heat outwards so that your body feels cool. A fifth idea could be to visit a nearby slum and interview and connect with people of less economic privilege than themselves to understand the injustice that air conditioning has been perpetuating on them where a small number of urban users through the use of their air conditioning are preventing the energy availability to underprivileged people to even operate a fan. This exercise will build empathy, will get students to realize that this is actually a humanitarian issue and not just a dry technical subject. If you have other questions, please do not hesitate to get in touch with us on our email addresses or through our portal, fedministing.org. Thank you.